Hello, hello, hello. I am Matt Williamson coming at you now at a little before noon on Friday. We have one round in the books. As you know by now, it's Broderick Jones. Only cost the Steelers the 120th pick to move up three spots in the first round. Really jump the Jets. I think the the Jets were scrambling after the Steelers made this move. That doesn't matter to the Steelers. They got their guy. But I do think he would not have got past the Jets. So I don't think that's much to give up at all. Uh, As it stands right now, I kind of hate that they don't have a fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. I mean, it's just a desert wasteland of backup safeties and things of that nature. And, you know, third string quarterbacks and stuff you could get there. But I want to talk about Jones. So first off, I'm a fan of this move. I mean, financially, it makes so much sense. Is if you can have a rookie left tackle for five years on a cost control deal, it's goal. I mean, it's not as good as a quarterback, but it's not far off. You know, you, these premium positions are unbelievably important. He's not yet 22. He's a couple of weeks away from turning 22. He's very young. He's only started 19 games for Georgia. Uh, he was a massive recruit. Um, he was the second rated tackle coming out of high school, uh, right behind Paris Johnson from Ohio State. They were both five stars. And if he'd gone to 99% of the school, he would have started much more than 19 games. But he was blocked there. I mean, this is the left tackles that George has had of late. Isaiah Wynn, first rounder. Andrew Thomas, first rounder. And probably the second best left tackle in the league already. And then Jamari Saylor, who was a mid-round pick for the Chargers, but played really well for them as a rookie. I mean, more of a guard than a tackle, but a really good college player. So Jones has been behind studs, you know, obviously. Um, he would have been on any other team, of course, he would have been out there more. But he's raw. He has not played a ton of football. And I'm gonna start with the negatives. He Needs a lot of technique work. One thing you'll see if you watch his tape is his pass protection technique is sloppy. He'll come out of his stance a little high at times. That's very correctable. He's so athletic that I don't worry about that. So all these things are correctable. That's the beauty of it. That's why you pay an offensive line coach. That's why you pay coaches in general. But he's a really bad habit of dropping his head and his eyes in protection. Well, you can lose sight of your guy and it doesn't help your balance either. I mean, if your head's down here with your chin on your chest, it's hard to move in a very unnatural position in pass protection anyway. His hands are very powerful. They're big, but they're the usage is sloppy. He doesn't coordinate his punches particularly well. Um, he, as a rule of thumb... A lot of his issues are because he's too aggressive. And I don't think he's a trained killer. You know, I don't think he's Quentin Nelson, teabagging dudes, but he is aggressive and is needs to slow it down a little bit. You know, I can I can wait a pulse before I attack downfield and get ahead of myself and try to kill this dude. And that's true in protection too. He'll lunge here and there. Again, all these things come with maturity and coaching. The other thing that doesn't worry me, but you see a lot with him is, well, first of all, his upper and lower body don't coordinate together as well as they should and hopefully will. There's times where his hands are wide and his feet are narrow, too close together. But what stood out for me when I watched all his combine stuff, of all the linemen there, he was the best, in my opinion, of going through the bags, doing wave drills, whatever with a really wide spread base. And if you cannot compromise your, uh, your, your, your movement skills, but you still have your feet nice and far apart, you know, shoulder, le- shoulder width or even wider in his case, that's a humongous advantage and just short little quick sh- choppy steps, which he absolutely has the feet to do. So all that stuff needs work. So again, I'm starting with the negative. But here's the positive. He's a great athlete. I mean, 
he ran the best 40 of any offensive lineman at Indy. And he looks even faster than that on tape. I mean, he gets out on pulls, screens to the second level. And whenever he really opens it up, just running, he's fast. <laughs> you know, he doesn't look like, oh, he's fast for a lineman. He's fast. He accelerates quickly. He has a real nice build. He's not a fat guy. Um, one, this might be the only time I can remember this ever happening, but going into the draft process, he was listed at 6'4", and you know we don't have an official height and weight on a guy. Georgia listed him at 6'4". Well, he's over 6'5". Nobody goes to the combine as taller than they were in their school's program. Well, this guy is, which is strange. 313 pounds, big hands, long arms. He's a prototypical left tackle in terms of physical skill set. Great. Uh, he has a very extensive basketball background. You can absolutely see that. Quick pivots, you know, basketball-like movement. And I think he was more of a basketball player at heart. I'm not sure on that, but I mean, it's you would see that, you know, he's turning into a football player. But he does have aggression, as I mentioned. Loose hips, natural knee bender. Um, talked about his ankle flexion in my article about him that's out right now. Go check that out. He, you'll often see him move not on the balls of his feet, but with every cleat in the ground, which think about it as a car. You know, if as much tire as you can get in the ground, the better. If I can get every cleat in the ground, I'm going to be stronger because my ankles bend well. Everyone talks about knee benders, but ankle flexion is just as important, well, as important. Um, he has great balance. And because he's such a good athlete, he's gotten away with – the questionable or underdeveloped technique stuff, you know, like I got beat to the inside, but I'm quick enough that I could adjust because my technique wasn't good. Well, that won't translate the league. You know, I mean, you need to get better technique wise, but he's didn't allow a sack all year. Durable. I'm doing a 19 game stretch, but committed only one penalty, a false start his whole career, at Georgia. And oh, by the way, He's won two national championships. <laughs> it probably kind of buried the lead there. He's been the left tackle on the national championship team for two years in a row and quite good at it, to be honest with you. And I liked what Coach Tomlin said. Yeah, he, he has an immensely high ceiling, but he's pretty good right now, too. You know, and he, he, there's a lot to like here. So this won't sound super flattering, but if he doesn't. If he's not anointed the starting tackle job or doesn't blow Dan Moore out of the water early in camp, don't be concerned. You know, I mean, this is a tough position in that some positions, if you – Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver from Tennessee. He's not a developed route runner, but he can do a couple things great. So, I'll put him out there and have him do those things great. If you're a tackle, you have to do everything great because – Everyone will find your weakness and you have to do everything. You don't sub in and out or say, I'm just going to go out there in third and long. And Dan Moore's solid. So if he doesn't blow Dan Moore out of the water as a starting left tackle, don't go crazy. If he looks horrendous in camp, man, we'll talk about that. But I think I've been harping on this. I've been telling you guys this a ton too. At a minimum, I think he's your sixth offensive lineman slash big tight end, call him whatever you want. And even if he blows Dan Moore out of the water, which he might, by the way, it might just, we might all get to camp and be like, oh, this isn't even close. Then Moore becomes that guy slash swing tackle or guard. So all that stuff I think is great. Um, they now have a lot of depth. I could see Josh, I, I was calling him Josh Dawson, Kevin Dotson. I could see him getting traded, especially with Moore's ability to play guard. Talked about how they don't have fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. They absolutely can maybe turn turn Dotson into one of those. But, you know, left tackles don't grow on trees. And they're buying in a, an expensive aisle in the supermarket is the left tackle aisle. You never want to be in that aisle in free agency. And maybe he doesn't hit his ceiling and, you know, his technique stuff doesn't become phenomenal. He still probably is going to be a average left tackle. If he's in, okay, let me just put it this way. And again, this sounds not great, but if worst case scenario, he's the 15th best left tackle for the next five years on his rookie contract. And then he's off on his way. It was worth the pick. Cause usually you pay those guys like 15 million a year. 
you know? So think of it in that light. And what if he's the fourth best left tackle over that time? Well, then you hit a home run. And he's so young, he possibly could be a three contract player, you know, extend him when he's 27, extend him again when he's 30, you know, I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that's the beauty of these young dudes. So good stuff. I think they're in a really good spot. They got tackle depth, which is rare. They have a line depth, which is rare. They have upside. They have cheap dudes there. And I'd like to see them get some more picks. So, all right. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.